Hello everyone, welcome to the United Way TV and I hope you guys are positive. Positive after two games um, and six points for Manchester United. Positive after Manchester United. Just trust. I use the word trash a lot if you know better. Just trust West Ham three goals to zero yesterday at Old Trafford. Very inspiring game. The results, some would say the performance was, you know, more or less okay, but the results were good. In this video, I'm going to tell you guys what we learned, five things we learned in this game and also there are some bad news. So stay tuned for the end of the video and I'll give you guys the bad news. I guess you guys must have heard already, but I'll put my reaction on that. So, yeah, United are now, we beat uh, West Ham last night, three goals to nil. And uh, it wasn't a mistake winning. It's not a one-off. It's because we played well. Yeah, so that our victory yesterday has given us uh, 38 points now. So we have... Uh, ahead of West Ham, West Ham 36. That was what it was so vital. That was why it was so vital for United to win. And uh, considering that Chelsea, uh, Chelsea was beaten also yesterday by Wolves. Look, I've told you guys many times on my channel, yeah, guys, uh, that Manchester United is the soft spot for all media. Everybody criticizes United because they want to make a name. We United fans, we talk about our team and we criticize them constructively because we watch all our games. This is the difference between you who watch Manchester United games and the experts which you 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 bow on them because they manipulate your thinking so uh United are, are up now on the sixth point as I said and uh, it was uh, Ma uh, was Rasmus uh, uh, birthday yesterday who actually obviously he scored the first goal uh, just tell me about just t think again how he scored that goal he controlled with his uh, leg I mean his left and shoot with the other leg you know he controlled the ball and shoot with his left leg that was just fantastic goal from Marco from uh, I almost say Marcus Rashford uh, from Rasmus. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, Rasmus was one of the most important things we had in that game. It's an attacker, which I think if we do, if we do uh, use these guys, uh, this, uh, use the, the younger player that we have, we will be special. We will be special. I think Rasmus is uh, something that we, uh, we, we have to be really happy with. Also, another thing I must talk about here is this guy, Alexander Ganacho. I wouldn't say he had a fantastic game, but I would say his impact. As an attacker, Ganacho is a player that is skillful, very skillful player. In Argentina, they are already talking about him to replace a setting Messi. Not that he's at the level of um, Lionel Messi, that's a unique player, but at the level of someone who can carry a responsibility of a team. I think the test starts from playing Manchester United. If Ganacho can keep his head down, if Ganacho can keep his head down, then I am really sure that Manchester United, we are going to build something really, really big. I don't even know where to start. Really big. Because, uh, yeah, the, so Ganacho's performance yesterday was uh, um, actually something that very influential. This is a homegrown player, a player which uh, United at Ten Hag has put his trust in as a youth, came into the team last year. What I like more in Ganacho's team in his game this season is that he, if you have noticed the way Ganacho plays, is he is not he's not selfish. He tries not to be selfish because one of the qualities of a good attacker is he to be selfish, but Ganacho hasn't been. So Ganacho's factor was very important. Another guy's factor, which I think was so important, was Ten Hag. You know, most of you who are Ten Hag out, I know there are a lot of them here. Yeah? Some of them are around the channel because they are all about negative. Um, most of you are Ten Hag out. You are just Ten Hag out just because you are a daily trader. I said this on my video, many videos. Where we do here, we are not here just to get subscribers. We're here to talk with fans and I respect your opinions. So you should take that on board. You are just a daily daily trader. What does daily trading mean if you don't know? Someone who buys a share today and sell it, and sell it tomorrow or sell it the same day, even if it goes up. And those who are daily trader. Yes, they do make some sense, but they actually don't make a real profit. So they, they have a point in their opinion, but their opinion doesn't have substance. That's what daily trading means in football. I think you're a daily trader. I think you're someone with an agenda. So I've seen here that I said in the game that we played, the cup game that we we we, we played a couple of a week ago, that if Ten Hag lost against the Division 2 side, he has to be sacked. I've been in that position. But generally, I think Ten Hag should stay. Why? Because I think Ten Hag is just from a team, from a club that is good at, at uh, mauling players. Let me give you guys an, uh, something, right? If Ten Hag was a corrupt manager, do you think Van de Beek would have been, uh, wouldn't have been playing for Manchester United? Van de Beek was a very instrumental player for Ten Hag system when he was in Ajax. Van de Beek's situation has made me understand this man. Yes, he might be naive. 
as I've said many times, his weak point is that he doesn't understand the Premier League, but he's learning very quick. But I think Ten Hag is an honest guy. He's here for succeed. He's a fighter. And I think even if we lose whatever game, I will uh, encourage Enos to give him another another year. So Ten Hag Ag Factor was there. and uh, uh, But let's go back with some news, which is really bad. And one of the bad news is this. Licha Lisandro Martinez at the 70, I think it was 77 minutes or 70... 71 minutes uh he, he had this collision with this player which i think is a disgrace if you looked at it in the slow motion that uh chelsea player the name is out of my head had to be booked at least a yellow card because you can see him really swaying on his leg if it was casemiro who did that he would have a yellow card this is the bias that we have in the premier league if it was casemiro they would have done a video whatever and given him a yellow card we have seen that with uh was it carrick no not carrick how do you call this? A Liverpool attacker who played for, who, who destroyed Ericsson's leg. I know football is a contact, team, but, but contact game, but guys, when you look at how certain decisions are made, uh, you, I mean, it's a joke. It's, it's really a joke. I, I don't see any reason why uh, we don't have, uh, we don't uh, we, we don't take these things very serious, to be honest. Because, one second here. So, uh, yeah, guys, um, uh, so th this is what I'm trying to say, that uh, the problem here with United is that I think we are targeted by the Premier League. We need to we, we need to be very careful. A player like Casemiro, who is not an English player, I think he will be targeted going forward. And Manchester United has always been a team that uh, since uh, Sir Alex Ferguson left, most, not only pundits, but also referees are trying to make a career out of Manchester United. And we uh, all we need to do as a team is to understand this, identify it and uh, deal with things uh, uh, accordingly. Because m uh, w when you watch the games that United have had, the penalty that was given to Manchester United against Manchester City for uh, well, Rasmus Holland, and we have had a couple of that in the season and nobody and everybody gives a blind eye. So I think um, it wasn't, it wasn't good. They were not good enough. The, re the referees were not good enough. So what I, another negative, what I might tell you is this. This guy, you know, that's the negative. That is the negative. This is really a proper negative. When Kobe Menu was replaced and uh, McTominay came in, yes, he gave a pass uh, and uh, we scored a goal, you know, a decisive pass. But you could see a drop off in the midfield, our midfield. The biggest problem with Manchester United this season, I think you guys have noticed that. If you haven't, know, or maybe I'm blind. The biggest problem with Manchester United is that we have a, a first team, like 11 players who could start. But whenever we do some substitute, there is this drop off or there is this, the level just drops off. And this is a problem for any manager. So it is very important that in the summer, United, if we are bringing three or four players, they should be players who fit also uh, into the system. It is so important because if we can manage to do that and also bring in some youth who, who can excel in the first team, I think will be a team to be reckoned with. Because when Kobe Menu, which by the way had an average game for him, start for his standards, uh, was replaced yesterday, yes, he had to be. I said that on my reaction game, to be replaced yesterday because obviously, I mean, players are get tired. He is a young player. He doesn't need that pressure. And I mean, when he was replaced, Kobe uh, McTominay came, he was just hopping everywhere. McTominay is the kind of player you bring into a team when you really, when you really want to, uh, when you're leading. Yes, we were up, we we're leading, but McTominay is not a player that dictates a team, dictates a game, and that is a problem. That is a real problem from United, from the United point of view. We want players that can dictate. When we took out uh, a, a player, Nizanjo Martinez, who uh, has an who has an injury now, a knee injury. You can see the drop off. So it is very, uh, as I, I don't want to repeat myself, I've said that already, but I think Manchester United should look at this very closely. So um, five things that I learned in this in that game yesterday, I will tell you guys that for, to make a, 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 a short uh, recap, is that Rasmus Holland who scored, Marcus Russell, which I didn't mention, also is more is transforming to be a, a more, uh, let me say, not maybe not a star of Manchester United, but I would say, more like a senior player. They, that transformation is coming from Marcus, Marcus Rashford. Uh, Ganacho's influence, I think that's a massive start going forward. Um, Kobe Menu, if we can keep Kobe Menu, not only fit, but uh, keep him to have that energy. He's a young player who's just learning. That's all the good news. And um, yeah, with the bad news, uh, uh, Lisandro Martinez, I think he will be out for at least, I think if he can do it out for two weeks, it's okay. But more than that, that will be very, 
vital because um, uh, Lijazo Martinez is so important from the way we Manchester United play. He is so instrumental. He he defines the way Manchester United play because he's one of the few players, if you are a football person, that can take the ball from the defense and give a true pass. We lack those players are very niche. That's why most I think that's why most fans I I, I read on forums more fans believe he can play in midfield. That's how Guardiola was playing. Guardiola was a six who could play like a five because he he knew how to and to 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 to, to mingle in the midfield and give a pass to the attack. It's very important uh, factor as a footballer. Anyway, guys, that's my five things we learned. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please click the like on the video, guys. Please, we want to hit ten thousand k. Uh, uh, please, if you like, if you hit the video, just subscribe. If you watch till now, you're a legend. Share the video with fans. My hope is with you guys. Hopefully, our we'll, uh, contents will start being sharing from um, to many United fans, and we can get people to share their opinions here. With that all said, guys, uh, have, have a nice time. We're doing a cracking video soon, so stay tuned, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.